This time on the Prop Master, well, we're gonna work on adding some of these uh, little bits that sort of change this from Boba Fett armor into a basic Boba Fett costume. I mean, think about it, without some of this stuff, uh, it's just a guy walking around with some beat up armor and blisters on his feet. Because, you know, no boots. That's right, so basically what I'm talking about is the, um, the cape here, ammo belt, ceremonial belt, gloves, boots, Wookiee scalps. It's all these little bits that sort of add together to make this Boba Fett. And as usual, I have to apologize for the lateness of this video. Um, I had everything pretty much ready to go, but then while I was waiting for a couple of parts to come in, I ended up getting stuck on another job, and then as autumn was running out, uh, I decided to save my marriage by actually making these chairs that I promised my wife I would make. And of course, Halloween is always kind of a nightmare around here. And on top of all that, I managed to destroy the ACL in my right knee uh, during the process. Uh, so I'm back up for the most part at least until surgery, and uh, so we can finally at least get this video out and hopefully get back in the groove and cranking some more of these videos out. But as you can see, we've got a lot of work to do in a short amount of time, so let's get to work. Okay, so the first little extra prop that we need for Boba Fett are uh, going to be these, which are the Wookiee scalps, and they're easily overlooked, but also probably the easiest to do at least for the Return of the Jedi version. The Empire Strikes Back, it seems like uh, there's less variety, but it's like blonde and brunette, but it also seems like there's one maybe that is part blonde and part brunette, so you might have to actually um, get an extra blonde and an extra brunette and then braid those together in order to get you know, that combination. But for the uh, Return of the Jedi, you just need a blonde, a redhead, and a brunette. And the easiest way to do it is just go online and look up doll hair. You might have to look a little bit, but eventually you're gonna find something that's essentially this. Um, braided and crimped. You know, the important part being braided and make sure that it's got a total length of four or five feet. There's a lot of them that are like, you know, just a foot long. You don't want that. You want the ones that are like four or five feet long and braided. This particular one obviously is uh, wavy hair. Um, they're not expensive at all, a couple of dollars. I can't remember exactly, but it's like between one and five dollars, I'm not sure. Um, this one's a dark brown, then they also had the red and the blonde. So let's go ahead and open this up. And you'll see that you almost have all that you need right here. It's essentially just a five foot long braid of wool doll hair. Um, now there's nothing holding the braid together, so we'll have to fix that first of all. So you're gonna need the doll hair and you're gonna need something to tie it up with. Um, I have some of this. This is actually bowstring for making uh, you know, a bow, like a bow and arrow. Um, you don't need to go out and buy anything special. I just have this and I have a lot of it, so that's what I'm gonna use. Um, some of this heavy duty thread will work just fine. Probably not in the green. Try to go with black or a dark, dark brown. And I'm just gonna take, you know, maybe 18 inches or so of this. It's just a little, little bit easier to handle if it's not still attached to the spool. Uh, let me get something white real quick. So I'm just gonna take one of the ends here. Just gonna hold it. I'm gonna leave maybe an inch at the end 
And then I'm gonna take, I don't know, maybe um, a half inch of the string. I'm gonna lay it down. Maybe three quarters of an inch. And basically I'm just gonna wrap the string around the hair on top of this piece of string. That'll hold everything in place. And then when I get, so start out with like uh, a, an inch of string, wrap back about a half of an inch, and then tie it to this last half of an inch. Leaving about an inch of hair out here at the end. So this is gonna be a little bit easier if I've got something to hold onto that hair with. So you can use a vise, or in this case, these vise grips will work just fine. So leave about an inch of hair, and then just wrap this tightly around. Do it very much, just about a, a half of an inch. I'll go a little bit further. And then from there, I'm just going to tie a surgeon's knot, which is just a, uh, a regular knot like you were going to tie your shoes. Only you'll do one extra loop into it. I guess I hold it with my left hand and I can now I can go around once just like I was tying my shoes and just give it an extra wrap around. Pull it tight. That'll kind of hold it in position. And just finish it with a regular knot or the, you know. So I'll just get this wrap right along here. Cut that off fairly short. And then you can either use a drop of super glue or I'm just gonna use a liner to burn those edges so it doesn't frazzle. Okay, now let's go to the other end and we're gonna do the same thing over again. The difference is this end, we need to have this loose hair. So, you know, maybe two and a half, three inches. You might want to go longer. Um, you don't want them to all be the same length, so. It's nice to kind of float between maybe three inches and five inches. I think the red one that I've got here is a little bit too long. So we got about four inches there. And I think I'm gonna go with a longer piece of string this time. Um, you know, two inches or so. I won't actually wrap that much of it up, but this will let me you know, tie this a little bit easier. And go ahead and start wrapping it.
And if you do it fairly tight, it's going to um, kind of wrap everything fairly neatly on its own. I'm not really trying to get everything to line up perfectly or anything like that. So I'm just going to go up till I've got, you know, uh, two or three inches of thread left and then I can go ahead and tie these together again. Once again I'm going to do that surgeon's knot which is just once around and then around a second time. That'll hold it in position, get it good and tight, and then just finish it with a regular knot like you were tying your shoes. this end. If it is a little bit messy, you can kind of push the threads together. I really should have uh, chosen the blonde hair to show y'all with. Okay, now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this far end here, and I'm going to unravel the braid, but you'll still be able to see the, th the three different parts of the braid, and I'm going to cut those at three different lengths so that it's not just one big wad of hair at the end. So I'll cut one of them fairly short. I'll leave one of them fairly long and I'll just cut the other one right in the middle. This is just so I don't have a large wad of hair at the end of this. And now I want to go up. So here's the, the unraveled end. And here's where I wrapped it. And I want to move up, I don't know, six inches from there, five inches from there. And that's where I'm going to go ahead and wrap this other end to that. So that makes kind of a big loop. This time I'm going to use a maybe two and a half feet of the thread. I won't need anywhere near that much, but I'll need more than I've been using and I want to make sure I have enough. So from the wrap, I'm going to move up about five inches or so. And if you want to make sure this doesn't move around, I've done this on a couple of these. I'm just kind of pulling apart the braid a little bit here. Just barely wide enough that I can slide this thread through there. I'm going to pull it so that there's about, you know, five inches there. And I'm just going to tie it so just make sure that this can't slide up and down the length of the hair. I'm going to take this short end, pull it up this way. Now I'll have this end. I'm going to lay it so that this spot right here where it comes through that hair is right at the end of all of this 
hair that I um, unbraided on the short end here. Up over all of this loose hair. Probably do the first one. You can leave some pretty big gaps as you go around. That'll kind of contain everything. And I'm going to come all the way up to where this wrap is on this end that we're attaching is. And then I'm also going to go back down also fairly loosely. Not loosely as far as the tension going around it, but I'm not going to make um, each loop right next to the other one. I'm really sorry that I did not think ahead and do this with the blonde hair. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to go up trying to make a fairly consistent wrap. this this is nice and secure now they do not have to be tied up against there you can definitely have some thread hanging off the end and this is what you're trying to get let me show you on the blonde one so you can actually see Here's the wrap here. You of course can't see the wrap on the other end because it's inside this wrap right here where this comes down on top of the other one. And you just get a nice wrap all the way up. And that's it. That's exactly how you get the Wookiee, uh, Wookiee scalps. There's not much to it. And at least for Return of the Jedi, you need a Redhead, blonde, and a brunette. And I'm, I think for the uh, Empire Strikes Back, it's just a blonde and brunette. And then there's one, in fact, it may just be a blonde and a brunette, but it also might have uh, a blonde, a brunette, and then a blonde brunette combination. Um, and if you're doing Django, I don't believe he has any at all. So you can kind of skip this step. Um, so now that we're done with these, uh, we can go ahead and go on to the cape. Now I filmed uh, distressing the cape and, and working with that actually as part of the last video, but um, I pulled it out so that it would fit in with this group better. So let's go ahead and look at that footage. So the first thing we need to deal with is Boba Fett's cape. Now this is just basically a bit of olive drab um, fabric, a canvas fabric that is uh, 31 inches by 36 inches. And the sides and top have all been folded over and sewn into a seam. So uh, you'll actually want something that's a little bit bigger than 31 by 36 so that you'll be able to put seams on the sides and the top. That just leaves the bottom edge kind of raw, and that's the edge that we're going to want to uh, distress quite a bit. Now, when it comes to these seams, if uh, you don't have a sewing machine or just don't like to sew, you can always use a product like this. This is, um, you'll find this at pretty much any store that sells fabric. Um, it's called Stitch Witch or, you know, various other things depending on the the manufacturer. It's essentially just like hot glue in a ribbon form and you know you can just take your material fold it over and put you know 
a strip of this down there and then you iron that it melts the, the little ribbon stuff and you know glues that together so that's that's always a good thing to do if you don't want to go ahead and sew now if you're real serious about keeping this the way it is in the movies um, you'll notice that there's actually a couple of seams that run down I don't know what is that about uh, so about four inches from each edge there's another seam that runs down the length of the, uh, the cape that'll be harder to do with this but if you do so that's a detail you want to go ahead and put in and of course this is all uh, Return of the Jedi if you're going with Empire Strikes Back it's actually more of a golden khaki color that you'll have to do a lot more stressing uh, you know weathering on because it's you know pretty dirty so we'll get around to the dirtying this up uh, in a minute the first thing we want to do is to tear up this uh, clean edge at the bottom now I've started a little bit on this just to make sure that the techniques that I wanted to use were going to work and uh, they do seem to be fine so we're going to go ahead and, and do this so what we really want to do is we just want to you know first of all destroy this clean edge but we also want to go ahead and make it more jagged so I don't want to just mess up in a straight line across I want to go ahead and go up and down quite a bit and this is usually in you know most uh, tutorials that I've seen where someone gets out a pair of scissors but that's not what I want to do this is the tool I want to use and normally I would do this just on the ground uh, just on the concrete but it's just a lot easier to film up here so I've got a big 10 pound steel weight here that I'm going to use as kind of an anvil but you know the floor of your driveway or garage will work just fine in fact that's what I used over here and I'm going to use the hammer the way you're supposed to I'm just going to hit this thing and I'm going to do it in kind of a, a zigzag pattern that you'll see And when you've hit it enough, it's just going to fluff off in your hand. And make a really nice distressed edge instead of trying to cut something that looks natural and then make it, you know, more jagged. Of course, I didn't want to get too close to this little hole right here, so now I'll start doing more up and down. We're going to do this all the way across. This would be easier if I was on the ground because I could, you know, use this whole area. Oh, by the way, if you want to get real serious about this, um, the original came from a U.S. Army pop tent. I see U.S. It's U.S. military, uh, one or two man pop tent. And the reason why it has the seams on the side is because it was made by three in three sections of fabric, and they just cut the center section out. They had these little seams on each side of it. And I bought this online as a cape thinking that I would never find anything like that but after this came in I went ahead and looked it up and I did find actually a few uh, US military pop tents that were green canvas and uh, you can still find them so that's something you might want to look into just you know do a search for a US military pop tent uh, if you say canvas that'll probably narrow things down a bit 
and uh, you'll get a few. Mostly it seemed like eBay had several. Now this corner down here, this is the corner that's opposite where you actually hang this from. So this will be the, the lowest part of the cape. And I already wish this cape was a little bit longer. Apparently I'm a little bit taller than Boba Fett was. And um, so I definitely don't want to remove too much material from this corner. So I'm gonna start getting a little bit less jagged as I move into this corner. I think I may actually go up a little bit higher over in this side over here just to uh, make it not so f consistently flat across. And of course, kind of randomly around, you can go ahead and knock some other little holes in here. And of course, this isn't the only way you can distress this. Um, you can take some scissors or whatever and make some little shapes if you want to. Um, another good thing, I just got a torch here. This is fairly up toward sort of the shoulder area where this hangs. So like that's a good place where you're going to get blaster fire or something. So now you're going to want to test in a bit more inconspicuous area, like down the very edge just to make sure your material acts this way because you never know when it might, um, you know, just burst into flame or something, so. So that's a little different effect there. Let's pick a few other randomly spaced areas. Make sure they're not all the same. The other thing you might want to do is to not actually go as far as burning it, just see if we can discolor it a little bit. There we go, it hasn't significantly weakened it, it's just kind of put a color there. Helps to kind of hold it up occasionally and look just to make sure you're not inadvertently making like a little line of damage or something like that. Make sure everything looks completely random. Also, you don't have to use a blowtorch and this is just basically, you know, it's like a cigarette lighter. And I'm just coming up underneath it. 
Yes, but anyway, it's a little bit different effect. But essentially the same. Okay, I just kind of took a break for a second to take a look at some pictures just to see what else I could see. Um, and everything looks, you know, we're, we're right in there. Uh, the damage on both capes for Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi are very similar. Um, I know it's on uh, Empire Strikes Back down in the, the lowest part that hangs. There's like a, three little holes that are there together. I don't know that I want to, you know, we should try to get that specific. Um, but they both had some pretty good sized holes toward the middle of the cape. Um, at least as far as I can see. This little hole right here that's like a buttonhole. This is where it attaches. It's, um, what, about eight inches? About seven inches from the edge. And of course the opposite side is the part that hangs the lowest. So right in between those, it's kind of going this direction. I'm gonna put a reasonably sized hole, but I don't wanna go you know, like this kind of a shape or anything, because I don't want it to just hang down as a as a snag. I want it to just be kind of a hole that doesn't get in the way of anything and just kind of looks good. So I'm going to go sort of from this top corner to the bottom corner. Pinch snake. That's a mistake, but I kind of like that effect, so I'm going to leave it in. And I'll move this hole down this way. So this is just where this, you know, this 10 pound thing is on this weight. And it's made kind of a nice little effect that I kind of like, so I might keep that in mind. And I think that's pretty good for what I want to do as far as physical damage. Um, now we want to go ahead and do the same kind of weathering that we did on the, the flight suit and flak vest. Okay, so I've just been doing some of these sort of brown striations on here, little burn patterns that aren't really burning all the way through. And you can't really do this with the cigarette lighter or anything like that. Um, you're going to have to use a torch for this if you want to do it. It's just a good way to get this lighter colors into it. And needless to say, don't do this in your bedroom or your dorm room, or really indoors for that matter. Um, I don't know what has been treated with this fabric's been treated with, if it's you know what material it's made out of. So you don't know what kind of vapors you're releasing here. Um, also, you know it's quite a bad fire hazard. Now, when I'm doing this, I want to be really careful that I get just that sort of khaki color. Anytime it gets a little, you know, it starts getting this sort of brownish color here. Um, that's probably going to end up a hole. Those are small enough, that's not a big deal. But you can see just below it, that's not, you know, that's larger than I was really hoping that was going to be. Um, so I want the light color, but if it gets dark, um, you know, you're going to end up with a hole eventually, and you may not want one, especially the size that you're making. That's something you want to be really careful with when you're doing these long, stri uh, long strips. And one of the big advantages of doing this on the floor like this, of course, is that um, if something catches fire or it gets too far along, you know, you can put it out like that. So wear shoes, have something just in case, you know, a fire extinguisher is a great idea, especially, you know, if you're doing this somewhere where something else might catch on fire. But uh, just in case things get out of hand, it's good to have. Okay, and you see that all of my stripes that I'm doing are from all areas, and but they're all sort of leading up toward this spot right here. And this is where it attaches to the armor. So this is sort of the highest point of the cape and everything else hangs down from there. So I want this to be like if something, you know, caught fire or whatever, it kind of went up toward that area. And I've got this pretty much the way I want it. Um, it might be something 
along this edge. This is just going to plane over here, so I'm just going to. But this I can't really go up toward that. But this all kind of hangs funny anyway, so I'm just going to going to go up this general direction. So you see, once I start getting any color at all, I move from there. If I want to make that wider, I can do that, but I'm going to wait until this cools off a little bit. That started to catch right there, but I stopped. So I'm going to stop because that's getting dark and it's getting close to that hole right there, and I don't want those to join together. And I think maybe something along this area here would be good. I don't want it to be a consistent line either, so that's about perfect. And I think I'm done with that. I think that's gonna look good. So be safe, but have fun. Okay, so we've clearly identified the color that uh, this green turns when you hit it with a blowtorch, and that is a cardboard box color. It kind of looks like there's either long tears or transparent areas in this uh, cape now. So um, what I have here is um, our acrylic paint mixed with water in the same ratio, a teaspoon of paint to a cup of water about. And this is uh, burnt sienna. It was just sort of a, a reddish brown color that I wanted to see what that would do, if it would even show up on this green. Well, they didn't do very much at all, except for put some wrinkles where we sprayed the paint. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just ditch any brown, and we're gonna go straight for uh, the black. This is the Mars black and water mix, same ratio, and we'll see what that does. I'm gonna go with more of the splatter spray technique first, hopefully. We'll go ahead and dry that and see what that looks like, and then we'll know whether or not we can go ahead and go with the rest of it. Well, it's a little better, but it's still not really showing up. And I'm afraid that if I put another layer down, I'm just putting, it's not gonna absorb as well because there's already acrylic paint there. So I think I'm just gonna have diminishing returns doing that. So I have um, added some more, I just put some more paint in here and shook it up really well so this should be a roughly the equivalent of a tablespoon of paint to, I'm sorry, not a tablespoon, a teaspoon of paint to three quarters of a cup of water. And we'll see how this works out. I want to get quite a bit of dark here because the way this is kind of looks, it kind of looks like maybe you got caught in a gear or something. So I'm going to kind of play that up and see if I can get a lot of sort of this black around that. A little greasy spot. Okay, let's see if three third time's a charm and we'll dry that off and take a look. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, there's nothing just really standing out like a big black spot, but at the same time, there's definitely light areas and darker areas, and that's what I'm going for. Um, that little area in the middle that looks like a gear got it. It's a little darker than everything else, but it's not quite where I want it, so I'll probably darken that up with some spray paint. But um, all in all, I really like the way that looks. 
Now, um, if you don't have a blowtorch and you're not gonna be able to do those light areas, it's still gonna look fine without it. Um, you might try a light brown spray paint, but I don't think you're gonna get that same kind of effect. Um, if you do do a test somewhere um, on a different piece or something, just to see if you can get it right. Um, otherwise, I just wouldn't worry about it and I think it's still gonna look fine. So I'm gonna hit that spot right in the middle with a little bit of black spray paint and then um, we'll be done with this. It's not too bad. I think that's good. I'm gonna leave it at that. Since I had this out, I might hit one or two little spots. Just so there's not just one area that's a different color than everything else. Okay, so let's move on to the armor. Well, here's the cape on the armor, and uh, you know what? It looks pretty good. I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Now that we have the Wookiee scalps and the cape taken care of, we can go ahead and move down to uh, Boba Fett's waist. And the first thing you're going to want to deal with is this uh, ceremonial belt that he's got. And this looks complicated, but actually it's quite simple. This is simply the girth belt for a horse. Um, you can find these at pretty much any tack shop. Um, it may not be exactly like this, but you'll find some variation. Um, but this is probably the most popular or the most common to find. Um, it's just a mohair girth belt. It's made up of individual little ropes that are stitched together in certain areas. Um, I know that if you go to some of the websites that have um, Boba Fett, you know, parts, uh, you can buy this already stained. This is, by the way, the wrong color. This is actually reasonably close to Jango Fett uh, color, but Boba Fett's is much more red. Um, I just kind of happened upon the right way to do this. Um, I had heard that using just regular fabric stain will stain it but then that stain tends to rub off onto the uh the flight suit and everything so i didn't want that and i had just some uh deck stain that was very red actually it was um i can't remember if it was red it was something redwood or something like that but it was a very red stain um, so i tried it unfortunately none of that red came out in this at all and it's very much, uh, I mean, you can kind of see how it was kind of a burgundy-ish color, but none of the red shows up at all. It's all kind of a bluish color. Um, oh, well, I tried that, and it does stain it very well, and it will not wear off, uh, which is good. It's just the color wasn't right. Um, oh, well, and then I happened on several uh, videos on YouTube uh, about how people were doing it and um, latex wood stain seems to be the the most common way to do it now you want to make sure that you use a latex stain not an oil-based stain um, well, before I get into that let's actually talk about the girth belt itself um, if you can go to any pretty much any tack shop and find one of these um, or on uh, just go on Amazon you'll find it real easy Google it you'll find several sources it's just a plain mohair girth belt um, for horses and I went ahead and have masked off the buckles um, I'll show you how to do that in a second but you know, you don't necessarily have to do that. I did not, in fact, do that on these. And, you know, it would be a lot of work to actually clean these off. But at the same time, you know, you want it to be pretty rustic and beat up and dirty so it's not a big problem. 
So it's, you know, it's whatever, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, masking them off is pretty easy. I'm not, you know, you're not going to be able to get all of it masked off, but you're not going to notice that anyway. I've just got some of the blue masking tape. I like to go underneath first because otherwise it tends to stick to the tape that you've already put on there instead of anything else. Which is fine, it just makes it hard to slide this underneath. So I go that direction, try to pull it away from the actual rope. And then I pull off some more and I wrap, you know, the other direction. Once again, just making sure I stay away from the actual rope part of the girth belt. Okay, so. I'm not trying to be terribly, you know, careful about it. I just want to kind of get it covered up. Okay, do that to all of them. And now we can talk about the stain. Um, I haven't been able to find this at Home Depot or Lowe's, but they do seem to keep it regularly at um, Sherman Williams. A lot of the paint stores tend to carry it. Um, it is a little bit pricey. Um, this one little, what is it, one and 13 sixteenths of a pint. Uh, this is like 15 or 18 dollars. So it's a little pricey for what you get, but that's all you're gonna need. And uh, the color that I picked was the absolute reddest color that they would actually mix for me. And it's just called crimson, so. There it is. And you're definitely gonna to wanna to use some gloves. And you're gonna need some kind of a bucket. But these are cheap and easy, so I've got several of these. Oh, I've also have, these are just a couple of clothes hangers that I've opened up so that they have, you know, hooks on this end. And then of course the hook on this end because you're gonna need somewhere where you can hang this to drip. Um, I'm in the backyard. I have a long cable stretched across my backyard that has decorative lights on it. That's gonna work fine. Um, another choice is uh, the gutter on a house. Works great, but anywhere that you can hang it. So you're gonna need something that you can, you know, attach to that, so. And you'll want two of them because you have two buckles. And beyond that, it's just simple. I'm gonna put my gloves on. You're gonna want gloves because you're gonna to have to get in and work the stain into the, the fibers of the girth belt. So let's see if this works out any better. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and hang this up so it'll just be out of the way. Uh, you're also gonna want something to uh, for the belt to drip on something that's going to protect the ground underneath it. I've just got this old, somewhat warped piece of uh, thin plywood. And it's pretty straightforward from here on out. We're just going to open up the stain. Let's hope that it looks something like that when we're done. Go ahead and just put that in there and pour the stain over the top of it. And then just really get in here and try to work the stain into all the fibers. Give it a good squeeze. And 
Yeah, this is definitely working a lot better than the other stain. Careful not to sling it around too bad. These areas where it's sort of tied together, make sure you get all those strands good. You're sure that the stain is in, you know, all the fibers. Go ahead and slowly pull it out and wring out any excess stain. Try to be better than that. If you see any areas that don't have enough stain, go ahead and put it right back in and make sure you've got it in there. If you need to um, let this soak for five minutes, then that's, you know, so be it. Do whatever it takes. This would be a good time if there are, if you have multiple people that are doing this, you know, go in together because I've done this and I'm basically just wasting the rest of this. Okay, I'm just going to punch the clothes hangers through the tape. I'll show you that in a second. You can see where I've just, um, you know, punched the ends of the hangers through the tape and through the buckle so that it can hang there. This is just hanging from there, the little cable. Better to do this earlier in the day where there's actually some sun sunlight. You know, it'll dry a lot faster that way. And uh, I'm just gonna let this drip dry. And that's pretty much the whole process. So it's the next morning and everything's good and dry. Um, so we just need to go ahead and take the masking material off the buckles. And uh, you may be asking if this everything's so dry, how come I'm wearing these gloves? It's like, well, the, uh, the tape doesn't work quite the way you might expect it to. You don't notice it quite as much on the, the pieces that were uh, hanging from the coat hangers, but um, especially on the other end where they're hanging down, all of this in here is, you know, kind of fills in that whole area and it's all still wet. This actually did a pretty good job of masking it, which is, you know, nothing like any of the others. But uh, it will not have, because of the tape, it will not have dried yet, and you can easily just wipe it off. So typical, three of them were exactly the same. And the one that I decided to show you on video uh, is completely different. So for the others, it was just, you know, I, as I was pulling the tape off, it was all still wet and sticking to everything. But uh, because it was so wet, I was just easy just to, to wipe it off quite easily with a rag. So everything's nice and clean. But 
you know, even with the uh, the messiness of that, it's nowhere near as bad as I was trying to wipe this off while everything else was, you know, dripping and soaking. And so you can see this is definitely a much more appropriate color than this was. This was the, um, I want to say it was red mahogany or redwood. I can't remember. It looked quite red on the, uh, on the, the little test sheet. And in fact, when I did my deck with it, at my old house, um, it was quite red as well. But on this mohair, it comes out almost like a dark, dark purple. This scarlet, which was essentially just bright red, um, is much more appropriate. So, um, you know, I think this is gonna be perfect. The next step is just how are we gonna put this on? I mean, obviously these buckles don't go together and this isn't gonna, most likely isn't gonna make it all the way around your waist. So just like in the movie itself, uh, the simple thing is just to take the buckles. Let's actually go a different direction with this. And I have some leather that I just cut from an old belt, actually two old belts. Um, if you don't have any old black belts, you can you know go buy an old leather black belt. The important thing is it needs to be the more casual type belt so that it's one solid piece of leather, basically just a leather strap, as opposed to more of a dress belt, which is usually several, you know, a couple of very thin pieces of leather with some cardboard or some kind of backing and it's all sewn together. You don't want that. Um, you can also find leather straps at uh, Michael's and Hobby Lobby, that kind of place. Uh, any place that sells little leather kits. Um, you can either find them in black or you might have to uh, dye them black. But the easiest thing is to either you know use an old belt or just buy a, a belt. Now obviously it did not come with all the holes in it. You know it had holes to about there and that was it. So you're going to want to go ahead and, and uh, punch some holes the rest of the length down here. And that's easy to do with either a punch like this. Um, there's also, I find these little kits work a little bit better. It's just uh, various size punches that screw into here and then use a hammer and drive it through there. Or like I did here and I just uh, used a drill. And I drilled the holes through. And that's really all you need. These are about 20 inches long. Um, if you need, you know, if that's just way too long for you, then you don't have to use a full 20 inches. Use 15 or 18 inches. Or if uh, this is not long enough, you know, use 25 inches. That's simply a matter now of buckling that and then pushing this back behind there like that. Of course, the bigger holes you drill or punch through here, the flatter this is going to lay. I probably need to make a little bit bigger hole here, which is why this is, you know, sticking so far up. If you have a bigger hole, you have a much flatter, you know, it lays much flatter. Okay. And there you have it. One girth belt or ceremonial belt for Boba Fett. And it's totally up to you whether or not you want to go ahead and weather this a little bit. Um, I may take a little bit of brown and black spray paint and just kind of dust over it so that it doesn't look quite so bright red. You know, it looks like he's been wearing it for a while. It's hard to decide and, and most of the 
pictures I see, this is fairly intense in color, but I think I'm still gonna tone it down just a little bit. I think this color's right, it just looks brand new, and you know, I need to dirty it up a little bit. But before we do that, let's talk about ammo belts. So when I bought the girth belt on Amazon, this belt popped up. And the price was about, well it was 30 something dollars, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but it was in the 30s. And so I just impulse bought it on the spot because I knew there's just no way I was gonna be able to make something for you know, anywhere near 35, 36 dollars, whatever it was. And uh, when it came in, you know, I was pretty excited because the quality is pretty good on this belt. Um, all the pouches open just fine. Um, they're stitched well. And, you know, I can't really complain about it. Um, but after I looked at it a little bit closer, there are some problems with this belt. Um, it'd be nice if there was some sort of hardware on the front, but, you know, that's not that big a deal. The big problem comes in that it's a very boxy shape and they're quite a bit wider than they really should be. Boba Fett's pouches are much narrower and they have uh, an angle across the front here. And what I finally realized is this is a Django Fett belt. So if you're doing Django Fett, um, then the Amazon, the belt that pops up on Amazon for you know 30 something dollars 30 I don't know somewhere between 35 and 39 dollars um, it's a pretty darn good deal um, I can say that you're probably pretty happy with that uh, the other problems I have with it is the belt itself is actually pretty nice um, it's a pretty nice belt but it doesn't have the hardware Boba Fett's belt has some grommets on the back this one doesn't have that um, I do not know if Django's has the grommets or if they're just playing like this. But quality-wise, quality I can't complain about this. It's just not the right ammo belt. So then I went to Etsy, and for quite a bit more money, I think I paid probably, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was probably closer to $80.00. And I got this belt, which, you know, looked much more the deal when I was on, uh, on Etsy. Uh, the problem with it is that the pockets, the pouches themselves are not real. They're just leather folded around a form and glued. Which, you know, for a costume is fine, but once again, it'd be nice if I could actually use these pouches for something. Uh, and the belt itself is pretty chintzy. It's very thin. It's either vinyl or leather. It's hard to say. It feels very cheap. Um, it's very thin. It is sewn on the edges, but then it's just folded over and glued in the middle. Um, it does have the grommets on the back, but they're once again, they're also kind of small and yeah, everything about this just kind of feels cheap, but it does look pretty good. So I'm not prepared at this point to buy one of the more expensive ones. It's probably sort of a cross between the two, the quality of the other one and the design of this one. I know that Empire Boots has one that looks pretty good, but I want to say it's a hundred and... $40 or something like that. I can't remember. Do not do not hold me to that price. <laughs> uh, but you might want to check out that website. Um, there's, you know, various other versions. Uh, just, you know, be a little bit wary. I've actually been fairly happy with the way this is, you know, it looks great. It's just uh, not quite as nice as I would like. So, the way you would normally do it is you'd have the ammo box here um, for the uh, Return of the Jedi. They're all together like this for Empire Strikes Back. They're split and half are on one side, half are on the other. And then you have your pouches. 
just slide on here. Like so, so you've got pouches on the side and then the ammo belts. And I don't know if that's the way they did it in the movie or not, but I just don't like the way it looks. I don't like the fact that this covers up the belt on the side. It's just a big sort of blank area. To me, it just looks bad. Um, you don't notice it so bad with the Empire Strikes Back. In fact, for the Empire Strikes Back, you really couldn't do this belt because the way, or you can't use these pockets because the way they're on here, you can't actually move these, you know, to where they would need to go. Um, so what I've basically done I'm not suggesting this is the way to do it because you don't want to buy more than one belt. Because I've pulled one of the grommets just fell off. <laughs> so that goes back to that whole quality thing. Um, so I take the pouches off of this one. And I take the pouches off of the Django belt. And because I like this belt, even though the colors don't quite match, it's still I like the look of it. So I, I go ahead and put the, the more correct pouches onto this belt. So now I have these on this belt and I take this belt and I use it for these, uh, these big pouches. And you don't obviously need to put, use a big belt like this. Um, if you want to use just a regular belt, that's totally fine. But this way I can put these on one belt and then this belt just goes over the top of that and you don't have that big just sort of plain uh, area. And also, if you want to do Empire Strikes Back or you want to move these a little further out, they can overlap the top of this. So I just think it works a little better to put them on two different belts. So uh, if I decide to go ahead and go with the Empire Boots version, um, I'll do like a, uh, a review of that later on. So there are several different places you can find belts, but I would definitely suggest buying the belts unless you've got a lot of experience with leather working and have the equipment. Uh, just because little things like the fact that a, sewing, a regular sewing machine doesn't sew through leather, that kind of thing, you know, you're, you're kind of asking for a lot of work unless you've got some experience and some equipment for working with leather. So now that we've got that out of the way, we can go ahead and do some weathering on this belt and the uh, girth belt at the same time. So I've got everything laid out here. Um, I went ahead and took the ammo pouches off of the belt just because I'm afraid that if I leave them on the belt, you might end up with little outlines on the belt itself so that if everything's not perfectly lined up, you'll end up with weird lines. So I don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that separate. Plus I want to be able to get a little bit on the sides of the ammo pouches themselves uh, just in case there's some separation. I don't think I'll be doing a lot to the pouches and the belt just because those aren't really going to absorb a lot of stains. So I just want to dirty them up a little bit. Um, the girth belt, I'm going to hit that a little bit more just because that's a softer, you know, that's the kind of thing that's going to absorb stains a lot better. I just have a couple of uh, cans of spray paint. I have this uh, Krylon matte black or flat black. And I have some 
Rust-Oleum Khaki. Well, this is a gloss, but I don't think it'll matter. Um, the reason why I've chosen these two colors is because they're the colors I had. I mean, I've got a lot of spray paint, but I wanted to have a black and I wanted some sort of a brown, and this is the closest thing I've had, you know, I have to it. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the khaki. And like I've done in the past, I'm going to spray this from, you know, three, three and a half feet away. So very far away. I'm just gonna hit it with little bursts. And if none of that is sticking, then I can move a little bit closer. The last thing I wanna do is be a little bit too close to begin with and getting a big heavy coat of, you know, light khaki on this. I want this to be not noticeable at all. I just want it to make it read more real and not look brand new. So I'm a good distance away. And I'm hitting the top of it because it makes it look more like there's dust just on it. Okay, that's plenty. I guess I should try a little bit on the uh, girth belt as well. This one can be kind of splotchy. I'm gonna switch over to the flat black. And for this, I'm really gonna try to hit more of the areas that I think I got a little bit heavy along here and maybe around this area here. Got a little bit heavy with that, so I'm gonna try to hit those areas first. The black I'm mostly gonna use on the girth belt, but you know, I also wanna get a little bit on the other stuff. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the girth belt. And just kind of like before, I just want to sort of hit randomly so that it's more of a, instead of a constant smooth color, it's just a little bit more dappled. Okay, that's plenty. It's interesting, uh, when I just look at the belt with my eyes, it looks very smooth and but mottled. I look at it on the camera and it looks like I've got these light stripes through here where it's all stitched together. Um, it doesn't look that dramatic in real life, which is interesting. But uh, that's good. I'm gonna let this dry just a little bit. It's probably fine now, but I'll give it 10 minutes just to make sure, and then we'll move on to uh, the next pieces. Okay, we're down to the last couple of things that you're gonna want or gonna need for your Boba Fett costume, and that is the boots and the gloves. Now, I know that there are several, well, there are some uh, descriptions on how to go ahead and make these boots, but let's face it, um, you know, making shoes is a little beyond me. Um, I can take a regular pair of shoes and build up foam around it to change the shape or make it look like it's armored. But if it's gonna come down to actually making a boot that is gonna be visible as a boot like this, um, you know, that's, that's not something that I'm really comfortable with, uh, to be honest. Um, and when it comes to the gloves, you can actually find uh, several gloves that will work. I've seen everything from some little uh, hockey glove type things, um, some motocross gloves, and those all look pretty good, but they don't really look like Boba Fett gloves. And the gloves themselves aren't that expensive, so you know, it's why not go with something that actually looks right. Now I got both the gloves and the boots from uh, Empire Boots. 
Um, I can probably put a link to their page um, down in the information section. And, you know, I did a lot of research and as far as the boots are concerned, I haven't seen anything that's anywhere near as accurate as these boots. Also from what everyone has said, uh, these are extremely comfortable if you're gonna go out trooping or if you're gonna be at a con all day. Um, your feet have a tendency to swell up a little bit, so a lot of boots can get, you know, kind of uncomfortable. And my understanding is that these do not. I have not worn these for a long period of time, so I can't say for sure. Um, the big problem that I had, I, my original thought was I was gonna use one of my old pairs of racing boots um, and just modify them to look sort of like this, but, you know, these thick soles, you know, all, of, all racing boots have like a tiny little thin sole and plus these being a lighter color, it was gonna be hard to put a bunch of maybe EVA foam or something underneath there. I'm afraid those were gonna disintegrate after half a day, you know, at a con or something. So I went ahead and, and bought these. They weren't that expensive, but they're, you know, they are an expense. Uh, I don't remember exactly how much, so you'll have to actually look on the website. There are also some other brands that people really like and at the moment, I can't think of what they are. Um, I noticed that one of them that everybody seemed to like a lot, uh, when I actually went to their site, they were all discontinued. I mean, I, the pictures looked great and everything, but I think they're leather instead of fabric uh, is the big difference. Um, but they were out of stock. So that said, um, oh, just a suggestion. Um, the boots I found were pretty consistent with the size of my racing boots and everything uh, so they're pretty normal sizes just buy a, a half a size to a size larger than usual just because if you're going to be on your feet all day your feet will swell up and that'll help if they're tight at all they're going to be uncomfortable after an hour um, sort of the opposite with the gloves the gloves seem to be a little big um, I like my gloves to be fairly tight. It helps, you know, you can use your hands a lot better. Um, and I like a, a fairly tight fitting glove. But uh, if you compare these gloves to racquetball gloves or golf gloves or something like that, these run a little bit large. So if you're trying to decide between, you know, a medium and a small, go with the small. So let's go ahead and weather these so they're not quite so brand new looking. Now, you can kind of see that I have not done anything to these at all, so we're going to have to kind of play this by ear and see what things work. Um, my real fear, especially for the boots, is that they're going to have been treated uh, to repel water and stuff, and it's not going to soak into the, to the boots. It's just going to beat off, so um, we'll see. But at this point, my plan is to do basically like we did with the flight suit. I just have a little bit of burnt sienna, maybe half a teaspoon. I just poured a little bit of water in there. We'll get that mixed up. Okay. Add a little bit more water to this just so it'll pour. This looks pretty dark. So I think I'm gonna pour about half of this into my bottle. And my bottle says it has about 15 ounces in it. So I got ended up with more than half of it in there, but not all of it. I really wanted the raw sienna. Uh, I used all of that up that I had on the flight suit. And when I went to go buy some more, they had everything except for that. So um, I've got just a little bit darker version of that. Let me get this to kind of mist. I'm just kind of misting over the whole glove just so they're not so white. I'm going to make a little bit of a stream now. I want to be real random with it. It's definitely beating up on there, so 
We'll see how it works. Let's see how it works. Oh, by the way, um, these boots right here are set up in the Return of the Jedi style with the dark gray black on the sides and this is just gray. Um, that's the way most of the boot uh, companies will do it. That way they don't have to have two different kinds. And then you'll just, if you want Empire Strikes Back, you're gonna have to um, paint this center section, just to all fill in this whole center section with uh, black or dark gray. Because that's the, real, the only difference between the two. Get back to more of a mist. Yeah, I think we may have to do Kind of like we ended up doing with the flight suit where I spray it and Im immediately uh, hit it with a blow dryer. I'm just gonna shake all the beads of water. This is more what I was worried about with the boots, but it seems to be that way for the gloves. This may take a minute. There's no point in you just watching me stand here blow drying this. Okay, that actually turned out better than I thought it was going to. Um, if you notice here, these definitely have a much of a warmer tint to them than this area where I didn't get much on there. Um, so it is actually coloring them. Um, there are a little bit of a splotchy texture to it, but it's pretty smooth. So I think I'm going to now set it to mist and I'm gonna do sort of a one area and blow dry it. Um, just so I can get a little bit darker area around the knuckles and maybe we flip it over, we'll probably do just more of an overall um, on that. But I'm thinking that the fingertips and the knuckles will be darker than everything else. Um, as for the boots, didn't do a whole lot as far as making it look warmer than it is. Um, I'll probably just give it a little bit of an overall. If you'll remember from the flight suit, the, uh, the boots are mostly sort of look like they're pretty heavily covered in sort of a waste oil or um, soot kind of a, an effect. It's all pretty black. So I'll do most of the aging, I think, with some black spray paint on those. But uh, let's get back to work on these gloves mostly. Just setting this to mist. Get really close. That might have been too much. Maybe I should just uh, do a small, I probably should have just done that little area first and then blow dried it. We'll see how it works. Probably ought to get a little bit down here so it's just not pure white. Gonna make it a stream now. And just kind of look, okay, I actually like I'm getting a lot more red in through here, a lot more of the warmer tone, the sandy color to it. Um, here than you know compared to here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this one right here. Just thought I'd do a little bit around the knuckles, or around the, you know, this this part right here. Like, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. It's not really doing what I'm asking it to do, but it's, um, the technique itself does a really good job of making it look good. Just gonna flip it over and sort of randomly hit them. I do wanna kinda get this area here. Like when you see old gloves, they're always really kind of dark and worn around this part 
you know, sort of this shape here. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that. Okay. Let's go ahead and switch over to a darker color now, or a, a more gray color. Okay, what I have here is the exact same ratio of paint and water, except this is raw umber instead of burnt sienna. So it's just a much grayer color. And this I'm gonna mostly use on the boots. If a little bit drips onto the gloves, that's fine. I don't want to make it an even coating. I want to definitely, um, you know, get it on all over, but I want it to be splotchy. Just the way it's going on, it really looks like it's probably not quite enough pigment, but we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so we've got kind of an overall coating on it. Um, I'm just going to blow dry it and I'll be right back. Okay, that seems pretty dry and it's getting there. I can definitely see it more of a warm tone to a lot of the gray now. Um, or it's not so much that it's warmer, it's just kind of, uh, I don't know if you can see the difference. Um, you know, it was a, a real cool gray color and now it's, just looks dirtier. And I'm not really seeing it so much on the screen. Um, but hopefully you can see it. The gloves I think are pretty much done at this point. I'm pretty happy with the uh, way it's sort of darker in through here. Definitely seems like an old worn pair of gloves instead of just a constant gray color. So I'm gonna set the gloves aside. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, you know, if you'll recall the gloves, real, I mean the gloves, the boots really need to be dark. Not really sure how to do this where you can see better. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a little stronger. So basically I'm going to do the same amount of paint and just put it back into this, uh, the dark gray. So it'll be twice as much pigment as it has now. And see if that makes a little bit more of an impression. But this time I'm going to add a lot of color. You know, just a reminder, we're trying to get somewhere close to this, which we're not that far away from, but we need you know, some more variation in the color and some dark, you know, patches. So I'm going to add a substantial, you know, quite a bit more color than I have been adding. So I'm going to go ahead and add this and then we'll go ahead and start spraying again. Okay, now that I have this mixed up, I'm just going to go ahead and spray it, but I'm going to, I'm going to be very, um, random with it. I don't want it to be an all over color. I want it to be very splotchy at this point. But I also want to make sure I don't get, you know, all on this side and then stops in the middle. So I want it to be, you know, I don't want it to look like I sprayed one side of the shoe and then the other side of the shoe, in other words. I'm going to do quite a bit to the bottom of the shoe. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to go ahead and let this dry completely and it's going to take quite a while. So I'll hit it with some blow dryer and then I'll probably just let it dry overnight 
and uh, hopefully that will get it completely dry and we can do one last thing to these boots. Okay, well it's the next morning and uh, the shoes are completely dry. You definitely wanna make sure that there's no moisture in them at all uh, before we go into this part. And I'm just gonna dust them with some of this uh, flat black Krylon Color Master. Um, just like we've done several other times. They're actually not quite as contrasty as they look on the screen. Um, in real life, it's not quite that uh, of an obvious difference between the lighter gray and the darker. But they still look pretty good. I just wanna get a little bit more of a black feel to them just because that's what we have on the flight suit. And working on this boot here first. I'm kind of aiming toward the front of the shoe, mostly for the black here. And I'm mostly aiming at the bottom. For the front, I'm kind of giving it uh, mostly the bottom, but still some at, the, at the, uh, the top. But for the rest of it, I want to mostly get the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to this boot over here. Definitely don't want to cover up the patterns that I have with the other paint. Um, so don't get too heavy. I just want to give this uh, a dusting of black. I don't want to actually it'd be real obvious that there's like black splotches here or there. If you spray it and you instantly see like a, a dark area appear, that's definitely gonna to be too close. You wanna back up a little bit so that you're building up that sort of a, a dark shadow kind of effect. Okay, I'm happy with that. And that's the last little bit here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at sort of everything as a whole. And here you have it. We have all the parts added onto the armor and it really does, you know, sort of take it from just being some armor to being a Boba Fett costume. And this has been the basic Boba Fett costume. You can think of it as kind of the minimalist approach to Boba Fett. No flying, no offensive weaponry, all defensive. In the future, we're going to go ahead and do the gauntlets and then the jetpack. And uh, finally, we'll go ahead and do that EE3 blaster. Well, hopefully you found this video entertaining or at least helpful and if so why don't you go ahead and give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss any of those upcoming videos and if you have any questions you know feel free to ask um, i'll be happy to do my best to answer them i really do like hearing from y'all and uh, you know that's basically what keeps this channel going so until next time thanks